A modern city with traditional southern values. I underestimated how far he was going to go. What he was willing to do. Visit the historic French Ward and enjoy local cuisine at one of our five-star restaurants. Killing them wasn't enough. Lincoln Clay was using them to send a message. Or spend the afternoon in the bayou and take in its natural splendor. Sal Marcano had no idea what he was going to unleash. New Bordeaux. Safe. Family all headed for it. Make it your next vacation destination. This city survived the War of 1812, the Civil War, and God knows how many hurricanes. But when Lincoln Clay went after the mob, he inflicted more damage than all the wars and hurricanes combined. Lincoln's mother abandoned him in 1947, a couple of years after he was born. His mother, I heard she was Dominican. I always figured his father was white, maybe even not Italian. Not that it mattered. Back then, if you look black, you black. Same as today, I suppose. He stayed at the orphanage until 1958. 
Now, when did you meet Lincoln Click? 1966. I was running black ops out of Laos on behalf of the CIA. He was loaned out to me via joint CIA DOD task force. He was a quiet boy. Good boy. Two Purple Hearts, a Bronze Star, and the Distinguished Service Cross. He served his country with honor and distinction. After the city closed the orphanage, he fell in with Sammy Robinson. Sammy ran the black mob over in Delray Hollow. I can't say I approve, but often colored boys didn't have a lot of options back then. Boys like Lincoln, the ones who've been abandoned, they're always looking for a home. Always looking for a place to belong. I think he thought he'd find it in the army. Thing is, once that's lost, you can never get it back again. When he returned from the war, Lincoln ended back up over at Sammy's. Now Sammy owed the Italian mob a whole lot of money. And he needed Lincoln's help. It's a damn shame what happened. It breaks my heart. Still say this is the craziest goddamn thing I ever heard. Using real money to rob the feds. Well, hell, man, not like this is our cash. This all came from Skeletta. Besides, peanuts compared to what we're gonna haul out of there. Is everything we need to burn? Yeah, that's it. I grabbed the keys to the truck, then we can get the fuck out of here. Keys in the other room. Grab them so we can get the hell out of here. Still not sure about leaving him like this. He came through with the truck just like we asked. He greased his partner to make it look good. You got doubts? I'll take the chance. We should get going. You got the keys so you can drive. Come on, let's get the hell out of here. Cops crawling up our asses. Hey, hey, old man wanted us to keep one of the guards alive, help throw the feds off the trail. Like you said, I'll take a chance. Besides, if I learn anything from being over at Nam, someone's willing to flip sides once, you're probably willing to do it a second time. Fuck you in the process. So answer me this. It's the craziest thing you saw over there. You don't want to know. Hell, man, I'm a taxpayer. I got the right to know how my money's being spent. Oh, Georgie Marcano pays taxes. Damn right I do. That's how they got Al Capone, and I ain't going to prison for no fucking tax bill. Huh? Well, you gonna answer the question or what? Yeah. We on the coast of What the fuck you doing? Where was I? Yeah. We on the coast of Quang Nai. Evacuating the civvies for Charlie overran everything. Anyway, we get him onto a medical ship. This woman walks up. She's got a baby in one hand and 
the leash to a pig in the other. She starts up the ramp, and the MP stops her and tells her you can only bring one thing on board. So she tosses the baby into the water. MP goes ape. Tells someone dive in after the kid, starts screaming at the woman, wants to know what the fuck she's thinking. You know what she says, dude? She says, I can always have another baby. Jesus fucking Christ. Hey, man, you ask. <laughs> yeah, but I thought you were going to tell me a story about some goop getting his dick blown off or something. I mean, God damn. It's not a fault. But not like you think. Conditions over there, man. Jesus Christ. One day you're raising cattle, tending your rice. Next day everything bombed flat. You put people up against the wall. They will do anything to survive. That better than one delicious fucking pig. Guys at the reserve probably won't be too keen on you waltzing around with that piece of yours. I'll just leave it under the seat. I'm to see if these forged IDs are worth a fuck. to the loading dock. Some of these fellas might get a little uh, rough with the language and... Well, ain't like I've never been called nigga before. Nah, I know, but I'm just saying if I go along with it, ain't nothing personal. The only thing I care about is getting our hands on that money. Lincoln, get your ass out the truck. We need to move. Let's go. When I say something about being hot, that's when we make our move. All right. Now, right, here we go. Put your IDs up the glass. We're part of the Boeing crew. What the fuck's this shit heel doing here? Affirmative action. You know how it is. Old country is spinning around a goddamn toilet. You can follow me. As for you, go on and grab those bags off the truck. You'll be carrying them to the burning room. How much y'all bring in? $238,546. Small bills, mostly. I'll let Miss Gale call up to your office when we're done. She'll confirm the delivery. Appreciate it. Need to check that scatter gun. You packing anything? Still in training. Good. One less goddamn thing for me to worry about. You can pick it up on the way out. Buying rooms down in the cellar. This way. I ain't seen y'all around these parts before. Y'all's yeah, over in Georgia for a while. He just got out the service. And my cousin's been trying to get on here for over a year now. Was in the Navy for two tours, got medals falling out of his ass. Government tells him thanks, but no thanks. That's a crock of shit if I ever heard one. 
white man can't get a job. Yeah. Stay on nigga who's back and then it's high on the spot. Bastards better not be playing with each other back there. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! Christ, look at that. Didn't know y'all held that much gold. That yeah, Washington's been shuffling around on account of the war. It's here, then it gets sent to Dallas, then it comes back. Yeah, it doesn't make a lick of goddamn sense. <sighs> here we are. bags on the table there. Never done this detail before. Figured it'd be bigger. I guess the job done. Only time there's a problem is when the flu clogs up. Fuck. That's some heat right there. Used to use coal for it, but a year or so back we switched over to oil. Maintains a more consistent... <laughs> <laughs> God, that guy was an asshole. We need to move. Danny and Ellis should be coming up any time now. All right, give me a second. <clears throat> All right, you take care of those guards. Keep your ass down. You don't want them getting a drop on us. I know what the fuck I'm doing. laying into me. Huh? Come on, we need to get... Oh, I hope this combination skeleton got us is legit. I'll be damned. All right, go for it, Godzilla. Until Danny's done drilling. Hey, you gonna pull this off. Hold off the guards until Danny punches through with the drill. Grab the goddamn gun.
out of here is if we get the weapons stored in that armory. Bust the door open. I'll watch our asses. My old man gonna shit a brick when he hears about this. Fuck! Fuck! Come on, open! Face way worse than this over and now. Little smoke don't mean shit. Stay close to the vault, watch for the drill. I'll deal with these assholes. This boy starts something. Here he is! Get on it! Well, Sammy had men all over the place. Now, one of them worked at a cleaner's and stole the uniforms Georgie Marcano and Lincoln Clay wore on the day of the robbery. Another one was a janitor at the Federal Reserve, and he provided a rough layout. The robbery of the Federal Reserve was timed perfectly, and none of it would have been possible without the involvement of Sammy Robinson, Lincoln Clay, and the rest of the black mob. You just come from Vietnam? That's right. I was a Marine in the Pacific. You can take it from me. Just because you're home doesn't mean you're back. You understand? People around here, they don't... They don't get it. Never will. <laughs> Keep your ass out of trouble. caught up crossing the bridge. Don't worry about it. Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for my stepbrother, Lincoln Clay. Have you seen him? He used to get ticked off if you were even a minute late. Kiss my ass. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> <laughs> How was the trip? Me as how this is the first time in four years and somebody telling me where to go, what to do, or how to do it, it was fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> mm. What's new with the old man? Man, don't even get me started on Pops. He used to pull his head out of his ass. Same as ever then. Brother, you have no fucking idea. Damn, Ellis. She's looking good. <laughs> Just like I left her. Man, even I know not to fuck around with your cop. Mm. All right, come on. I'm ready to go home. <laughs> So Sammy's doing all right. Ever since we got your telegram about coming home, he's been climbing the walls. What if the plane crashes? What if the train's delayed? What if they call him back? And he goes stand in front of the kitchen window and sip his whiskey like he was expecting you to come strolling up the sidewalk. Don't say nothing about me telling you that. I won't. He'll be fine once he sees you. Ever since Mama Hell, you know how he gets. Fuck it, it's your car. Bash it up all you want.
remember Marty and Ron Langford? Sure. They moved up to Empire Bay a year or so after you shipped out. Started selling weed. They call and ask me if I want something. I say, sure. It's free money as far as I'm concerned. Anyhow, a month back, Marty drops me a line and says they're moving into heroin that they're looking for a partner down around these parts. Can't imagine Sammy was too keen on that. I never told him about the weed. That ain't nothing to nobody. But this, I gotta talk to him about. I ain't said more than three words and he's yelling about the feds. How we don't need J. Edgar up our asses and what the fuck am I thinking? Selling dope with kids running around the neighborhood. We ain't selling no dope to no children. <laughs> like they got any money to begin with. Fucking around the side. That was pretty serious shit. Knew a couple guys over in Nam who were running it. Wound up pissing off the wrong person. Got their throats cut. Shit, man, I know what's what. That's why I'm talking to Georgie about it. No way Sal's gonna go along with that. Georgie says he can keep his old man from fighting out. We'll still clear the high low in Frisco, just selling the French wall. Georgie's Uncle Lou won't say shit as long as we give him a taste of the action. I don't know, man. Georgie's a cool cat and all, but heroin ain't the kitty pool. Come in on it with us. I bet he'd agree to a three-way split. <sighs> I don't know. I kind of need to lay low a bit, figure some things out. Yeah, all right. Once you get settled in, I was thinking we could go to this new club in the French Ward. Maybe double date it. Well, who the hell am I gonna go with? Your great Aunt Beatrice? Oh, God! <laughs> I ever tell you I accidentally saw her without a shirt once? Oof. That woman has the droopiest, nastiest tits I've ever seen. <laughs> they were like two sacks of potatoes with nothing in them. Yeah, like that was a fucking accident. Hey, man, fuck you. I was damn lucky to walk away from that one. Anyway, you'll go with Regine. Regine? Believe me, once you see her, you're gonna want to dig right in. <laughs> Matter of fact. She got half the guys in the hollow sniffing around asking her out. Turns them all down. Come on, we're going through the front. I ain't having your wall here. I ask you to back it up. Look who I found panhandling out in front of the train station. Pleasure, man. Boy, I send you to bring Lincoln Clay home. Not the big nigga who ate him. Well, shit, old man. I finally went somewhere they knew how to cook. <laughs> Welcome home, son. How are you? I'll be better once I get some of that shine in me. I always <laughs> did love gone whiskey. I would like to make a toast. My father used to say that the real worth of a man came from the mark he left on the world. When Lincoln first told me he was joining the military, I was against it. Too dangerous, I say. Let those people fight their own war, I say. But then I realized Lincoln needed to go out and make his mark. And that's precisely what he did. I'm so... so proud of you. Paul Lincoln, bienvenue à la maison. Paul Lincoln, bienvenue à la maison. Good to see you. You're so good. <laughs> <laughs> nice seeing you, Lincoln. Oh, I kept you in my prayers. I really appreciate that, Father. <laughs> now, who wants to get shit faced? <laughs> Woo! It's hard to explain what it's like coming home from war. Elation, fear, guilt. Imagine being trapped in a dark room and there's no way out. And every fear, every nightmare you ever had is in that room with you. And there's no escape from any of it. And then one day a door opens and you're free to go.
just like that. The thing is, you made your peace with your terror and your fear of death. And now part of you is afraid to leave it behind. But what choice do you have? Every soldier has to walk through that door, one way or another. Man, that whiskey's gonna hoy in the morning. Hell, man, just sleep it off. The room's the same as he left it. I'm gonna take the basement. <laughs> the basement? Why the fuck you wanna crash down there? I'll see you in the morning. Man, that wall must have really fucked you up. We barely have two nickels to rub together, now we're paying for all that food. Jesus Christ! Watch that mouth of yours. We wouldn't be in this mess if you would have listened to me. What mess? It's not something you need to worry about, Lincoln. I got it under control. Under control? God damn it, you need to. Boy, I'm not eyes. warning you again! Have it your way, old man! Let him be. He needs to cool off. You mind telling me what's got him so riled up? We've been having uh, problems with the Haitians. But like I say, I got it under control. Well, trucks all loaded up. I figure we got enough out there for... Should I, should I come back? In honor of your returning to us safe and sound, I made a donation to Father James here. Supplied him with food he can hand out to some of our needier family. Well, I was hoping you'd lend me a hand, Lincoln, and give you a chance to see the neighborhood. This thing with the Haitians, how serious is it? Ah, you know Ellis. Someone looks at him the wrong way, he's on them like a wet dog. Like I said, I can now uh, come back. Nonsense. Lincoln needs to get out. Enjoy the day. Besides, be good for the two of you to spend some time together. Mm. Go on. Those people waiting on their food. Oh, I saw Langan a couple times once he was first back. <laughs> he told me he wanted to leave town, head out to California. Now, he had a friend in the service who could get him a job working at the Mare Island shipyard. And the only reason he came back was to tell Sammy and Ellis goodbye. But then he found out about the trouble Sammy was having with those Haitians. So he decided to stay in hell. Those Haitians, they are bad news. No talking Lankin out of it. Whatever else he might have become, Lankin was always loyal. Most likely. Three month apprenticeship to start, then the union lets you in. You tell Sammy and Ellis? Not yet. I'm gonna wait a few days. Didn't want to spring it on them since I just got back. Well, they won't like to hear it, but they'll come around. You need to do what's best for you. Go ahead and start serving those folks. I'll be back. Give 
Give Sammy my best, Lincoln. Yes, sir. Warm meal, warm heart. Oh, shot. Thanks. Good morning. You delivering a real blessing here, Lincoln. Thank you. Blessing's mine, ma'am. A couple of days back and they already got you working? Ah, I'm happy to do it. Means a hell of a lot to all of us. Don't get old, son. It's a fucking shit show. <laughs> I'll see what I can do about that. Hey there, Lincoln. How are you, Regine? I'm good. Nice to see you around the holler again. Nice to see those big brown eyes again. Well, they'll be over at my aunt's place with the rest of me. You should stop by. Maybe I'll do that. Megan, we got trouble! Run, Regine! What is yeah. done with you, Lincoln? Sammy's next! Motherfuckers over here! Francois Papa Doc Duvalier was elected president of Haiti in 1957. By 1959, he had created a secret police called Tonton Makut, and people started to flee. Uh, most of them settled in the southern United States. Now, mixed in with the good, hard-working people were hardened criminals. Uh, they formed the backbone of what became the Haitian gang. Now, Lincoln found out they set up in the swamps and were led by a man named Baca. Uh, you and Father James done already? We got jumped by the Haitians. It's time you level with me. Tell me what's really going on. Yes. I suppose it is. Six, uh, seven months ago, folks in the hollow started getting robbed. Money, jewelry, things of that nature. Didn't take long for us to figure out it was the Haitians. Then those batas on the law started going after the lottery. How much money are we talking about? How much? Enough that we're in deep shit with Sal Marcano. Haven't kicked up to him in three months. Jesus Christ. If I deal with them, that gives us time to settle up with Marcano, right? Let me worry about Sal. He and I go way back. With this thing with the Haitians. It's time for it to end. You and Ellis need to handle it. How are we gonna find them? Back in the 20s, folks used to pull salt out of the bayou. They even built themselves a little shanty town. When the depression hit, they abandoned it. That's the only place this could have come from. We're gonna need guns and ammo. Call this number. Do it away from here. No sense tipping anybody off. Or we could sweep the hollow, track down and kill every last one of those cocksuckers, then we wouldn't have to worry about it. The last thing folks in this neighborhood need to see is colored people killing each other. Do this quiet. Away from here. Once we eliminate whoever's running the show, the rest of them will go down on their own. Trust me. All right, soldier boy. I'll follow your lead. Be careful, yeah? Those Haitians are a hard people.
Do not ever underestimate them. You show this is how you want to play this. Last thing they're gonna expect is an attack from the water. You head back round to the row. Stay with the car. I'll meet you over there when this is done. Hope you know what you're doing. Trust me, Ellis. Here in a bit, this will all be behind us. Papa Legba, open the gate for me. Ellis, the other one. Lincoln Clay, he's the one. This time he won't get away from us. Until we find you, bro. I'll take the lead here. Oh.
How many men we send? Two teams. One's going to hit the bar. The other's going after pearls. Boss says if we have to burn down half the hollow to get Sammy, we doing it. Ain't stopping till that old man's dead. Him Papa Legba, who can dig? I can clear. He's the one. This time he won't get away from us. Shit about some worn out nigga. Long as the money's coming in, my colonel don't care who's handing it to him. I've heard something I don't like. Getting low! 
kill that useless old man. Fuck you! Who won't Fuck you! You made a big mistake going after the hollow. Come on! This one more way is your Zeke! Come on! Wait up! Fuck me! Stop on so too white now! The man you're talking about took me in when I had nowhere else to go. You are no better than you! You can't take those shoes! You fucking pig! Damn you to hell! Take it easy! Take it easy! Take it easy! He kept me in there, locked in there, day and night. Beat me, use me. I kissed you, motherfucker. You and your entire goddamn family. He's dead. He's dead. He can't hurt you anymore. It's over. Over? Over. <laughs> this is never going to be over. Pajam! Fucking Haitians. You picked the wrong one. Sammy's boy in there. Kill it. That motherfucker killed back. Soon as he shows his face.
Enemy's boys in there. Use to heal? No. Get you out of trouble, don't I? You old? I am. How'd it go with Baka? We came to an understanding. He stayed dead, not let him. Let's get back to Sammy's. Can't even tell you how happy Pops is gonna be. And this shit with the hate. Oh, fuck it, it's your car. Bash it up all you want. Where was I? And this shit with the Haitians has been weighing on me. With them out of the way, things will calm down. Go back to how they should be. Been telling him for months we need to do something like this, but Pops, he... I don't know. Sometimes I think he's lost the taste for this shit. Just because a man don't rush to violence don't mean you lost something. I know, it just makes me wonder what happens after, you know? No, I don't know. Explain it to me. Don't matter if it's a bullet or the hand of God. We all go sometime, right? I suppose. But Ellis, we don't need to talk. But... I pray that Pops outlives the both of us. But if you damn, you're scratching the paint. Anyway, but if he doesn't, every motherfucker in the hollow's gonna be looking to us a gunning for us. Just saying we gotta be ready when that day comes. Yeah, well, that's not something we gotta worry about right now. So just cool it with your grand plans, all right? Yeah, all right.
your car bashing up all you know. The thing Lankin didn't understand, or maybe want to understand, is that for a man like Sammy, there's always going to be more Haitians. Now, if there wasn't someone going after Sammy, then there was someone else forcing him into a bad situation. It was never going in. That's how Lincoln ended up working for Sal Marcano. You were right about those Haitians being down by that old salt mine. They won't be bothering us again. It was a mistake sending you down there. I should handle my own business. This isn't any different than what I was doing before I left. You probably don't know this. But every night on the TV, right after the news, they show the names of all the boys killed over there in Vietnam. I'd be sitting in the kitchen eating my supper, watching that list scroll by, wondering if today is the day. I finally see your name. But you never did. Nothing happened to me. There's only so much luck down the way. Sooner or later, pull up that bucket, there's nothing in it. So, what are we going to do about Marcano? Pay him his goddamn money one way or the other. Lottery going to be enough to cover it? The lottery? <laughs> no. But Sal called a bit ago. Wants you to meet him at the country club. Says he's got something in the works. Square things up between us. The only black folk allowed in there to help. Now, they may not like it, but they're not gonna say no to Sal Marcano. He says you get to come in, you get to come in. Fine. I always did want to see the inside of that place. You need to do whatever Sal asks, yeah? For all our sakes. Yes, sir. Native Son! Welcome back to Native Son, dear listener. Well, that was a much needed break because old Remy had to put a little more fuel on the fire today. <laughs> Thankfully, my producer Gilbert. Uh, thank you, Gilbert. He's kind enough to bring me in a full thermos of coffee from downtown's own tasty patisserie. Mm. Just hits the spot. And Nancy wanted me to remind y'all that tasty patisserie is still filling orders for king cakes for the upcoming Mardi Gras festivities. Now you tell her Remy sent you, and it's buy two, get one free. Can't beat that. So go on over there and tell her I sent you. Mm. I know, I know, I'm not supposed to enjoy my coffee on air. <laughs> oh, Gilbert's turning red, folks. <laughs> oh, I tell you, we like to have our fun, dear listener. And that's what Mardi Gras is going to be all about. Good old-fashioned New Bordeaux F-U-M. And if I sound a little enthusiastic, well, I'm sorry about it. But I am. I've talked before about being honored to be part of the crew of knights for the 10th year running. We got a heck of a flow plan for y'all, and we have spared no expense in struggling the cost. Now, this will be my first crew since my dad died last year. Dear listener, you know how important Mardi Gras was to him. God rest his soul, he was one of the crew of knights and founders. He was captain for more years than I can remember. Daddy was Rex back in 1932, for those of you whose memories go all the way back then. Oh, you know, I tell you, he'd spend weeks, that months, preparing. Mm. More than anything else, it was the tradition, the feeling of being part of something. You know, this city that he loved so. My father believed that every man had his role to play, and every role contributed to the greater whole. Those Reds over in Russia, 
Even the ones here at home, they try to sell that as he quite No, sir. There's always going to be a king. And each king has his day. Be sure is fine. On the next episode, you better believe we're gonna talk about this here story that President Johnson is considering a deal with the Russians to scale back our nuclear program. We're gonna have that and a lot more right here. Native Sun. Fuck you doing up here? Help goes into the back. I'm uh I'm here to see Mr. Marcano. The name's Lincoln Clay. That a fact? I'll be goddamned. Mind your manners while you're in there, boy. Or they'll be hell to pay you here. Park over to the side. Man, get a look at you. I bet those fucking gooks shit themselves when they saw you coming. Been a long time, Georgie. Oh, no shit has been a long time. I think the last time I saw you was that night over in the French Ward, right before you shipped out. <laughs> Damn it, that wasn't a gas. Oh, I seem to remember me and Ellis running from the cops, uh, and Danny ending up in the drunk tank. Hell, man, I bailed him out. Besides, so just worth it to knock the hell out of them cracker assholes. <laughs> Smoke? Sure. <laughs> oh, man. Sammy said Mr. Marcano wanted to see me. Mr. Marcano? Shit. Make him sound like a goddamn lawyer. You just call him Sal. Come on, he's in the back. <laughs> I should have wore something else. Hey, these squares have a problem with your threads. Take it up with my old man. He'll tell him to kiss his ass. <laughs> nice thing about having fuck you money. Olivia, I hate to cut this short, darling, but I've got a meeting coming up. Remy, a pleasure as always, sir. Two more glasses. <laughs> Lincoln. Good to see you. This is Vito Scaletta. He's the one I've been telling you about. Come on, Lincoln, sit down. So you served in Vietnam, huh? Yes, sir. Sal tells me uh, you earned a few pieces of tin over there. Well, I served with some good men. Nothing I did would happen without them. Army? Marines? Regular army at first, and then I was recruited to the 5th SFG. Special Forces. I told you it was something else. Now, not that anything's gonna go wrong, but just in case, goddamn, don't you want a man like that on your side? Well, if you're vouching for him, Sal, that's good enough for me. <laughs> Look, I got a couple things to take care of. Thanks for the drink. Christ, that guy's an asshole. <laughs> Fucking carpetbagger. Commission sent him down here from Empire Bay about 15 years back. He's been a pain in my goddamn ass ever since. Well, I guess you're wondering what this is all about. Yeah, Sammy didn't tell me too much. Twice a year, the feds take old money out of circulation and destroy it. 
Over the course of the next few days, that money's gonna be delivered here to the reserve in town. And you're gonna hit one of those shipments? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. We are gonna use that occasion to gain access to their vault. And then steal everything that ain't nailed down. <laughs> Should be six, seven million in there, easy. <laughs> that's, that's pretty fucking ballsy. <laughs> it's a chance of a goddamn lifetime is what it is. Now, Vito's fronting a lot of the money for the job, and he got us the combination to the vault. Have you had a chance to see Danny? No, not yet. Oh, well, you will. We brought him and his old man in on this, and they're gonna need your help, so go see them. They ain't still in that same place. There's something else we gotta talk about. Now, it's safe to assume you know about the problem Sammy's been having. I took care of the Haitians. Once things settle down, money will start coming in again. You see that right there? That's what I'm talking about. You didn't sit around with your thumb jammed in your ass. You saw a problem, you went out and took care of it. God damn, I take that over money any day of the week. We pay our own way, debts and all. Always have. Oh, hell, son, I know that. I wouldn't expect otherwise. But you know, even after we all evened up, you're still gonna be slopping around in the ass end of this city. Not much of a future in that. But maybe there's a different way forward, you understand? For all of us. What'd you have in mind? I want you to know I mean no disrespect when I say this. Sammy's a hell of a man, but he's not getting any younger. And I'm thinking it's time to make a change. Well, I don't think that Ellis is ready for that kind I'm of not stuff. talking about Ellis. I'm talking about you. I want you to run the holler. <laughs> I can't do that. Well, look here, if you're worried about Sammy, don't, you understand? Now, he's always been on the level with me. And this job we're talking about, there's more than enough for him to retire on. He took me in when I had nowhere else to go. He treated me like a son. I'm sorry, Mr. Marcano, I, I can't do that to him. Well, shit, son. I'd be lying if I didn't say I wasn't just a little disappointed. But I get it. You're loyal, which is something that is scarce these days. Do you still want me to help with this thing we've been talking about? <laughs> you goddamn right I do! <laughs> and when it's all done, you all be more than square with me. You have my word. <laughs> what do you really want to hear? That we kidnap and torture anyone suspected of working with the VC? I'm trying to ascertain the level of training that Lincoln Clay received during his time in Vietnam. Someone like that you don't need to train. You point them in the right direction and get the fuck out of their way. You got so long. Piece of shit drill kept overheating. You and Lincoln both still in one piece? Yeah, we good. Where's Danny? He's pushing everything off to the side so that we have room to catch the money. All right, well, once you square the way up here, we start driving it down. We'll make it quick. Motherfuckers killed the lights. Just worry about the money. I'll deal with this.
had this much fun in ages. They're trying to flush us out. Stay focused on what you're doing. What is going on? Here he is! Get over it! Lock this place down! Looking for cover! This is a goddamn massacre! Damn it, those guards will cut us down the second we make a break for it. Tell Danny he needs to get us out of here. And hey, these bastards got us pinned down. Y'all need to figure something out. I got some TNT. I'll put on our side of the hole and detonate it. What the fuck is that gonna accomplish? With any luck, it'll blow a hole big enough for y'all to drop down. With any luck, Danny, do you even know what the fuck you're doing? Come on, it's dynamite. How complicated could it be? It's lit. Get the fuck away from the hole. No one really knows why Sal Marcano turned on Thomas Burke, uh, but he took Point Verdun from him and gave it to an enforcer named Roman the Butcher Barbieri, who promptly busted up one of Burke's legs. Now, Danny Burke was part of the heist crew. I mean, he was a gearhead, had never done anything like this before, but Thomas Burke insisted. He figured if the heist was a success, Sal would forgive him and return Point Verdun. Penetrator, all right. <laughs> hey, now I heard there ain't nothing sweeter than Vietnamese pussy. You tell me it's true. <laughs> Casanova Clay. Shit, man, it's so fucking good to see you. You too, Danny. That's Nikki. God, she wanted to be here, but I ain't remember how I was. Oh, God damn, you piece of shit. Yeah, unfortunately. Come on, let's grab a beer. Wait for the old man to chill out, and then we can get down to it. Yeah. What's up, man? Yeah, I already got it all set up and organized. All the girls gonna be there and everything, except we just gotta go in my cars, because we can't roll up in that beat-up piece of shit outside. <laughs> oh, you didn't just call my all-American machine a beat -up. I'm just saying, there better rides out there. Hey, bullshit there are. This car's a beast. I dropped the custom 358 in before we shipped out. That ain't the only thing you dropped in there. Maybe you should tell them about how you'd borrow it from Ellis and take the ladies for a ride. <laughs> Hell, man, leave me out of this. Did you fuck in my car? Mm -hmm. nah, it ain't no big deal. I was always wrapped up tight. <laughs> Besides, I already got one fucking bastard in my life. I don't need another one. All right, you know, you're going to clean it. Not just the back oh. seat. Every square inch. <laughs> I don't need to be riding around sitting in your shit. Hey, and you, funny man, you going to fucking help. Like hell I am, shit, I didn't get any. Yeah, well, this is new. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, you fucking joker's got about as much chance of pulling this off as I do at winning a goddamn decathlon. Oh, all right, Dad, we hear you. <laughs> Danny and Ellis, you're gonna use the drills to cut a hole up through the bottom of the vault. You and Georgie, you'll be inside. You're gonna drop the money down, then get the hell out of there. That goddamn drill ain't easy to move, though. So we need a boat, to get it through the canals and into position. Well, Ellis and I worry about the boat. See, George's old man flipped the guard to reserve, giving you his truck. <laughs> <laughs> Between that and the uniforms, and no one gonna give us a second look. <laughs> Come on, let's get moving. 
still got to swing by Skeletta to finish up some prep work. Hey, and you two assholes, don't think this gets you off the hook when it comes to my car. Y'all best get ready to clean it. I ain't cleaning shit. Hey, you cleaning it. My father was a lot of things, few of them good. But he started out smuggling moonshine, so he knew about the canals underneath the city, and that one of them went right under the Federal Reserve. It was his idea to use a boat to move the drill into position. He was a real son of a bitch, my father. More than anyone else, I blame him for what happened. You want to stick your own neck out? Fine. But leave your son out of it. It's his fault Danny died. I'm glad we're breathing and all, but what the hell are we gonna do now? Our only option is to head up. Are you kidding me? There'll be cops all over the place. Well, with any luck, they'll be too busy dealing with Mardi Gras. Uh, Notice us. Let's go. Well, damn it, this ain't a gas. Uh. Hey, you sure you need to grab that much of my ass? Oh, shut up and keep climbing, man. out there, I hit a payphone. Calls it a ride. Can you walk? Yeah, somebody give me a hand. I can get one. Uh, it's probably just gonna be easier to carry a sorry ass. Hold up. Come here. Hey, hey! Uh, don't put me the fuck down! <laughs> if anybody asks, we say he's drunk. Y'all pick up that money. Let's go. Uh, oh, God damn it. Hey man, get off the phone. Right fucking now. 
I insist that you apologize. My mistake. Sorry. Yeah, keep an eye out. We're some deep shit and need your help. Where are you? Just off the parade route. Danny's hurt. I can't. Sammy's having a car delivered. It'll be at the loading dock at the grocery store. God bless the old man. Let's go. Hey, careful. I'll deal with the cops. I'll no. warn them off you. Hey, no fucking way, man. It's all right. He ain't going alone. We all got a friend. Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go. Go, 
Sleeping on a bed of titties. I don't care what it fucking costs. 
They go. Yeah, yeah, man, they done. I knew we could pull it off. I knew it. We're rich. Fuck. <laughs> I'm robbing people with a six gun. I fought the law, and the law can kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I fought the law, and the law lost. <laughs> Well, how much is it? A little over two million dollars. <gasps> per split. <laughs> <laughs> Holy mother of God. Once everything's settled up, I'm calling the man I know, having him bring over three hookers. Boy, ain't All no right. hooker ever stepping foot in this house. You sure? Because two of them are for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be fucking in my new drifter. Well, I'd appreciate that. You know, my entire life, there's always been someone standing over me, telling me, where I could go, what I could do, who I could be seen with. This. What you boys did tonight. This changes everything. This isn't just money. It's freedom. Real freedom. Ain't no one standing over me again. <laughs> over any of us. Vouloir c'est pouvoir, eh? Vouloir c'est pouvoir! Well, well, well. Oh, man, 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 look at this. <laughs> oh. And look at what I've dug up. You mind pouring one more of those? Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> It'll be my pleasure. Judge, he told me ship went sideways during the robbery. Lincoln had to save your ass. You should be damn proud of that, boy. I am, Sal. More than you'll ever know. <coughs> oh, Jesus Christ, that is some down-home hooch right there, isn't it? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Listen, I got a guy outside. You don't mind if he comes in and packs up my cut? Not at all. Look at that. Let's see if you can handle this down-home hooch. Yeah, I'll give you some of that. Trying to get some corn whiskey, make you a man. <laughs> they all the same. <laughs> hey, take the one on the end. It's your cut. Plus what I owe you. Even put in a little extra for your trouble. Couldn't have pulled it off without you, Sammy. Y'all done right by me tonight. Mwah. Mwah. Why don't you get us something off the top shelf? We need to celebrate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You ain't got to tell me twice. <laughs> yeah. hey, fill me up. All right, you know something, Lincoln? You're possibly the baddest motherfucker I ever laid my eyes on. She shouldn't have said no. <laughs> Where the fuck you think you're going? Stupid fucking niggas. Come on, grab that bag. Let's go. When I got the Sammys, the whole place was burning. I still don't know what brought me there that night. Luck? Divine Providence? Or something else? out of the fire, he woke up long enough to tell me to call John Donovan. So that's what I did. Most days I wish I'd never made that call. Mr. Donovan, do you know this individual? Sure. Sal Marcano. Mm -hmm. And how about this man? That's Sal's worthless piece of shit, brother Lou. Look, 
Enough with the dog and pony bullshit. What's your real question? Did you help Lincoln Clay murder Sal Marcano and all prominent members of his crime family? You're goddamn right I did. I see a bad moon rising. I see trouble on the way. I see there wakes of lightning. I see bad times today. Don't go around tonight. Well, it's bound to take your dad. There's a bad moon on the right. I hear hurricanes are blowing. I know the end is coming soon. I feel rivers overflowing. I hear the boys from Rage and Ruin. So those the men you're gonna kill, huh? That's the plan, Padre. It's a dangerous course you're contemplating. And what do you think we should do? Sal Marcano deserves to die. I won't argue otherwise. Kill him. But let that be the end of it. That's not enough! It's enough if you say it's enough. I know what Sal did to you, Lincoln. But nothing you do will bring any of them back. This isn't about bringing them back. Or even exacting some street justice. It's about making that bastard feel what it's like to lose everything. Watch as I take it all away from him. This is a one-way road, Lincoln. Once you start down it, there ain't no turning back. I'm going to Sammy's to get my stuff. You ready? I'll be waiting in the car. <sighs> Taught us kids to turn the other cheek, not fight back. Problem is, that don't work. Not in the real world. <laughs>